Hi again everybody. This week I want to talk about one of Hollywood's worst kept secrets and that was a soprano dubber by the name of Marnie Nixon. Now she is probably, as I said, one of the worst kept secrets in old age Hollywood because nobody was supposed to know that she was this kind of the voice of the stars. Um, it was written into her contract several times that um, if she did reveal anything about who she was dubbing for, that she would be fired and blacklisted in Hollywood. So um, imagine her surprise when one of the most famous people that she dubbed for released the secret for her. So yeah, this is about Marnie Nixon. And she is probably, uh, I've got a couple of notes just to remind me of some of my research here. There's four um, famous people that I'm going to talk about in regards to Marnie Nixon here. She is the singing voice for Audrey Hepburn in My Fair Lady, Natalie Wood in West Side Story, Deborah Kerr in The King and I, and she also does a small amount of dubbing for Marilyn Monroe in um, the song Diamonds Are a Girl's Best Friend from Gentlemen Prefer Blondes. A lot of people are still in denial about that, but um, when you listen to Marilyn Monroe sing, she wasn't a soprano. And when you listen to it, it's obvious where the dubbing was. Obviously, Mar Marilyn Monroe had a beautiful voice, but she, she had a beautiful alto voice. I love low voices on women. I find it so sexy. <laughs> It is because I'm a soprano myself, so when I hear women doing those low notes, it's just like, oh. It's like there's a certain like texture and timbre to it that's just like, I wish I could make those sounds, but I can't because I've got a high singing voice, not a low singing voice, despite what my speaking voice would tell you. It was written into her contract across her career that if she ever revealed who she was dubbing for, that she would be fired and blacklisted, and that she would never work in this town again. Hollywood, that is. And she didn't have many on-screen credits, but the one that kind of made me think about doing this video was the fact that she did have an on-screen appearance in The Sound of Music, because um, I'm in rehearsals for The Sound of Music at the moment, so while I've been doing research for The Sound of Music, I hear across Marnie Nixon and um, I already knew about Marnie Nixon and her history with the kind of the dubbing side of things in old Hollywood. I never researched it to the extent that I have now just because I when it came up when I was doing my um, Sound of Music research I just thought well, it basically took me off on a tangent of just looking at Marnie Nixon rather than looking at the Sound of Music. But she played Sister Sophia in The Sound of Music. She would, she would, didn't dub anybody in The Sound of Music. She was herself. It is well publicised that both Audrey Hepburn and Natalie Wood were quite angry when they found out that they were dubbed because the production led them to believe that they would be doing all their own singing. Due to other research, I found out that Natalie Wood was genuinely surprised when she found out she was dubbed because throughout the whole of filming, they kept telling her how amazing and wonderful she was with her singing. And you can find original recordings of Natalie Wood on YouTube, um, people have found the original tracks that she sang for West Side Story and basically inserted it back into the film footage. And it's really interesting to hear because her voice wasn't terrible. She had a nice voice, it just wasn't the strongest voice, which explains why um, the filmmakers um, wanted to dub her. Um, so Natalie Wood got the biggest surprise of all of them because there was no inclination on her part that she was actually going to be dubbed. Audrey Hepburn, however, was aware that dubbing was going to be involved. She knew she wasn't a soprano. She knew that she needed help with the high notes. There is actually a video um, interview footage on YouTube of Audrey Hepburn admitting there would be a dubber involved for the high notes. So she knew there was going to be dubbing to an extent, but she did record, like Natalie Wood did for um, West Side Story, Audrey Hepburn did record her own backing tracks for the film, My Fair Lady. And you can actually hear her on the actual film soundtrack. There's the song 
the name of the song escapes me right now but it's when she's fantasizing of killing the professor basically <laughs> and it kind of it's got like her kind of speak singing at the bottom and then it cuts to Marnie Nixon in the middle for the high bit and then it cuts back to Audrey so you can actually hear Audrey singing in the film just not on the high notes <laughs> and it's only that one song um, that you can hear Audrey Hepburn on um, the rest of it is Marnie Nixon a lot of people think that um, Marnie didn't quite match Audrey Hepburn's voice and that the dubbing was a bit more obvious than other films they do think that she did best um, with the dubbing with Deborah Kerr but that was mainly because Deborah Kerr and Marnie Nixon actually were, became really good friends when they were making The King and I and they worked really closely together to make sure the dubbing was perfect and they even recorded a song that didn't actually make it into the film where amazingly and very bravely they flip between Deborah and Marnie quite a lot it goes from Deborah doing the speak singing to Marnie doing the singing singing and it keeps jumping back and forth you can find that on YouTube and um, when I find it I'll pop the link in the description so you can listen to that because it's so brave to even think of doing something like that of having two voices basically being the same character in the same song but yes so Audrey Hepburn based on the interview that she gave where she admitted that she knew that there was going to be some dubbing involved due to the fact that she wasn't a soprano usually when it comes to dubbing and things when they know about it they will m mime to a recording of the song that has been done by the dubber for example because they still do dubbing they did it in high school musical in the first film Zac Efron didn't sing they caught another guy in Drew Seeley to do the voice of to do the singing voice for Zac Efron which is ridiculous considering the fact that he's done quite a few musicals now for Zac Efron and they didn't dub him in high school musical two or three they just did it in the first one so I don't really know the thought process behind that it might have had to do with the fact that Zac Efron could not commit to the tour and so they wanted to have the, the person who was doing the singing voice for the first film be able to go on tour afterwards who knows but as I said you know dubbing still happens and in the case of that um Zac Efron probably would have mined to the Drew Seeley version to get the mouth right because what was unique about the dubbing process in both My Fair Lady and West Side Story was that both Audrey Hepburn and Natalie Wood recorded songs themselves so that they could then mime to their own voice and then once that had happened and they brought Marnie Nixon on she had to sing so that the um, her version matched um, Audrey's and Natalie's version so that the mouth syncing would work and that I can't imagine how difficult that must be to be able to sing something and have to match the mouth movements perfectly which to be fair I don't think it did match completely perfectly in the end but in the, the old star musicals it didn't really matter that much because the, the way they use the vowels was very different than we do now um, if you go back you don't even have to go back very far in history probably the 50s and 60s probably the 70s probably as well not so much the 80s but there was a ref definitely a certain style of speaking and singing um, that they had all you have to do is listen to somebody like Frank Sinatra or Debbie Reynolds or um, Grace Kelly somebody like that and you can hear the yeah there was a certain accent that they used um, when they spoke there was always a certain accent they sing with again Marilyn Monroe you can just listen to the way she spoke and sang there it's very different um, voice inflections than we use now I do actually say that the lead singer of Panic at the Disco has probably singing style is probably closer to the Frank Sinatra than it is to nowadays does that make sense because <laughs> whenever I listen to Panic at the Disco I just think this is probably the voice that's closest to the style of Frank Sinatra than any other modern day singer but anyway <laughs> Yeah, hopefully I'm making sense um, in regards to all of this but back to Marnie Nixon as I said you know she was sworn to secrecy she only got a set amount of money she wasn't entitled to any royalties from the film or all the soundtracks which in this day and age seems like daylight robbery and so she had to keep stum and she had to keep it quiet but the fact is you know within the Hollywood circle people knew 
of her. They knew that she was dubbing for people. People think that Marnie Nixon is the reason that Audrey Hepburn did not win the Oscar for My Fair Lady. Take from that what you will. Because <laughs> the fact is, if Audrey Hepburn had been using her real voice, um, she may have been a stronger contender against Julie Andrews for the Oscar that year. And that she was also very, very unhappy to lose to Julie Andrews, who almost got the role of Eliza. <laughs> almost. They decided they wanted a name in the end. And then what happened? Mary, Mary Poppins happens and Julie Andrews gets the Oscar for Mary Poppins. And she thanked the guy who, um, was it? I think she thanked the director of My Fair Lady in her Oscar speech for Mary Poppins. And I just thought, uh, I aspire to that level of pay. <laughs> especially saying thank you to the man who made my fair lady and didn't cast me in the role because it meant I was available for Mary Poppins. That's basically what Julie Andrews did. Okay, so to talk about, um, I'll talk about Marilyn Monroe dubbing next because as I said, lots of people are in complete denial that Marilyn Nixon had anything to do with Diamonds Are a Girl's Best Friend. But when you listen to the song, you can tell. Marilyn Monroe did not do the nose at the beginning of the song, you know, where they go, no, 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 no. That was Marnie Nixon who did the nose. Marnie Nixon was a soprano, Marilyn Monroe, Monroe wasn't. And then there's only one other part of the actual song that Marnie Nixon had to um, do. The rest of it is Marilyn Monroe. And it's the bit where she goes, um, these rocks don't lose their shape, diamonds are a girl's best friend. That line. That is the only other bit of the song, other than the nose, that Marley Nixon had to do because Marilyn Monroe just couldn't hit the high notes. She wasn't a soprano. She was an alto or maybe a contralto or somewhere in the middle. I've never ever thought of Marilyn Monroe as a soprano because she wasn't. Anybody who can't hear it probably needs to get their ears checked because the um, sound in that part of the song where Marnie steps in it does become slightly clearer and smoother than Marilyn Monroe's actual voice. You need to listen to the whole song to be able to hear it. Marnie Nixon did admit it, was it, I think it was a, a biography that she did, I think, um, where she admitted that those were the parts that she did in the song. And obviously, if there was anybody out there to counteract that, they probably would have done by now. But it's Marilyn Monroe fans in particular who refused to admit that Marnie Nixon did those parts. And it's just like, well, you can believe all you want, but Marnie knows what dubbing she did. And, you know, it doesn't take away from Marilyn Monroe. It doesn't take any enjoyment away from listening to the song. Knowing that actually enhances the um, listening of that song for me because it makes me really listen to how Marnie Nixon imitated Marilyn Monroe's voice, which is really well done, by the way. And as a dubber, it was her job to be able to do that. It was Marnie Nixon's job to be able to mimic other people and try to um, kind of balance out the voice so it sounded like it came from that performer. And I tip my non-existent hat off to any person who has ever had to do any dubbing for someone else because I think it, that must be a bloody hard job to do that kind of mimicry because um, I'm not good at impressions. The only impression I've ever been able to do was Janice from Friends and that was a very long time ago. <laughs> if you follow me on Instagram you might have noticed me attempting to do it again recently and I don't think it really worked. Um, I don't have the biggest ear for accents. Um, I can do a couple of accents, but I don't have the biggest ear. I think through maybe some more vocal training, I might be able to get there. Um, but at the moment, it's it's all right, but it's not great. Okay, so moving on from Marilyn Monroe, I'm going to the person who made the world know about Marnie Nixon, Deborah Kerr. She knew that she didn't have the voice. She knew she couldn't handle the singing all by herself and she knew about Marnie Nixon. She became friends with Marnie Nixon. They had to work very, very closely together on The King and I to kind of make it all work basically. So Marnie Nixon was able to study Deborah and see how she used her mouth. She was on set nearly every single day with her to um, 
kind of work out like, kind of like the acting side of things obviously trying to get the vowels right trying to get the movement right um, if there was any dancing involved she could use her voice to be able to um, incorporate that into the music and I think that that um, the relationship between Man and Ixon and Deborah Kerr was just beautiful because obviously as I said as I will continue to repeat, Marnie Nixon's career was on the line if she ever spoke about who she dubbed for. So what did Deborah Kerr do? She sat down and had an interview with, a, was it, I think it was a newspaper or a magazine or something, and said, um, yeah, I'm not singing, Marnie is. Deborah Kerr did that. She made it so that Marnie didn't break her contract but Deborah had no nothing stipulated to her contract saying that she couldn't talk about Marnie. They never thought that um, Deborah would actually reveal that she wasn't the singer. But she did. And openly admitted that she didn't sing. And that she developed a close relationship with the person who was dubbing her. And um, I think it was quite a beautiful friendship that developed out of that. As I said before, Audrey Hepburn and Natalie Wood didn't have that relationship with money because they didn't really know about the dubbing side of things. Audrey Hepburn knew she might get help with the high notes and then she turned up to the premiere and realised she'd been entirely dubbed. Natalie Wood was told throughout all the filming of West Side Story that she was perfect and there was nothing wrong and then she turns up and goes hang on a second that's not my voice because they completely lied to Natalie Wood about the dubbing process. They were just like, oh, no, 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 you know, you've got a beautiful voice, you're a beautiful singer, let's record that, let's do this. Then behind her back, they went and got Marnie. And that's not Marnie's fault. That was the fault of the producers and things for deciding to lie to one of their biggest stars about how good her voice was. Because both Audrey Hepburn and Natalie Wood did actually record their own songs for their respective films, People have found that those recordings, um, I want to say that some of those recordings made it onto maybe some anniversary DVDs and things like that. And there's people out there who have actually matched the um, original recordings from both Audrey and Natalie and matched them up to the scenes in the movie so you can see them singing it themselves which is quite an amazing and clever idea and i thank you to the people who have done that on youtube because that was a good help in especially when i was doing my research about marnie nixon about seeing the strength of both audrey hepburn and natalie wood singing the songs that they ended up getting dubbed for and both natalie wood and audrey hepburn had quite nice voices they just didn't have the strength behind it audrey hepburn beautiful voice she just wasn't a soprano it probably would have worked if they just brought in Marnie to just kind of fill out the top notes but ultimately they decided to double completely but Natalie Wood um but when you listen to the comparison between Natalie Wood's real voice and Marnie Nixon it's so different it is so different I think that's probably the one where Marnie Nixon didn't quite get it right in regards to the um, matching the voice up to the performer. Um, not to say that it was bad at all because obviously Marnie Nixon had a beautiful voice and there was a reason why she was employed to be uh, to dub these women but I think a lot of people think that Marnie Nixon just didn't quite get the, th the tone right when dubbing Natalie Wood. But again, it doesn't take away from your enjoyment of the films. It doesn't take away from the enjoyment of listening to the music. Um, I mean, My Fair Lady. I haven't actually seen the film of My Fair Lady, and I apologise for that. I do hope to see it soon. But I did watch a lot of clips of it while I'm doing research for this video. Seeing the original videos with the original footage of Audrey Hepburn, um, she did have a stunning voice. She did have a beautiful voice, she just didn't have the strength in the top notes and it became evident while listening to it why they decided to dub her in the end. But yeah, so that's information about the um, secret life of Marnie Nixon that finally got exposed by Deborah Kerr when she realised that she could tell the world about this beautiful voice who was dubbing some of the most famous women in the world at that point. Marnie Nixon passed away in 
think it was 2016 I want to say um I'll correct myself if that's wrong after she obviously after Deborah Kerr um, told the world who she was she started fighting um to get her royalties basically because as I said she was just paid a set wage for the films and then that was it she didn't get anything from um in royalties from uh, the film or um, the soundtracks it was just a set wage and when you look at the wage now it doesn't seem very much but when you have I think when you were just in inflation I think she got a fairly decent pay for it um but she did start fighting in her later life for the royalties which I believe she did get in the end and people realized how awfully she was treated um considering the fact that she was making them very rich people a lot of money <laughs> um because I think anybody who does voice dubbing deserves that recognition and um even with High School Musical um it wasn't that much of a secret about Drew Seeley I think a lot of people cottoned on quite quickly that it wasn't Zac Efron singing the entirety of the time and obviously they then took Drew Seeley on tour afterwards um, which made it even more obvious that Zach didn't actually sing in the first film. And yeah so um, that's my little bit of interesting um, factoids about Marnie Nixon. Um, I think it's absolutely incredible what she um, managed to do and I do hope that at some point they possibly do a film about her and really look at her life a bit more because obviously there was only so much I could get off the internet um, in regards to kind of her history and how she started and um, you know when I say you know she only did have like a couple of on-screen roles and I think the last thing she ever really did for film wise was The Sound of Music but she did lead a very wonderful life she obviously got to meet some incredible people she worked in one of those fantastic moments in hollywood history where there were just some incredibly talented and wonderful people and i do wonder if we're ever going to get that golden age again hopefully you enjoyed this video um it's nice to do something a bit different and talk about Miley nixon just um it felt like the right thing to do <laughs> when I, I was um, reading about her when I was doing my Sound of Music research but yeah if you do want to come see The Sound of Music at the Wakefield Theatre Royal I'll put a link in the description at the um, below we've got a fantastic cast as I said I'm a nun and I might be somebody else as well I'm not one of the principal roles um, but we do have a wonderful cast and it's so much fun being in rehearsals I'm really looking forward to um, performing it properly for everybody so yeah so i've been debbie drama you can speak to me in the comments if you, you can, if you like this video you can like it as i always say if you're watching this in bed please go to sleep you probably got something to do in the morning but yeah i'll see you next week <laughs>